He is known for being a prominent figure of gender romanticism and a polymath, excelling in various disciplines such as philosophy, literature, and science. He is recognized for his influential writings, including hymns to the night and unfinished novels, which showcase his deep knowledge and integration of philosophy, poetry, and science into a unique artistic form. His name is Novalis. In the picturesque region of Electoral Saxony, a young aristocrat by the name of George Philip Friedrich Freiherr von Hardenberg, better known as Novalis, emerged into the world. Born into a family of minor nobility, Novalis showed great promise from an early age. His thirst for knowledge led him to embark on a journey of intellectual exploration, studying law at prestigious institutions such as the University of Jena, the University of Leipzig, and the University of Wittenberg. During his time at Jena, Novalis not only delved into the intricacies of jurisprudence but also discovered his passion for poetry. It was there that he published his first poem, catching the attention of the renowned playwright and poet Friedrich Schiller. Their friendship blossomed, and it was not long before Novalis found himself in the company of another influential figure, Friedrich Schlegel, with whom he would forge a lifelong bond. After completing his law degree at the tender age of 22, Novalis found himself working as a director of salt mines in Saxony and later in Thuringia. However, his true calling lay in the realm of art and literature. Novalis' early reputation as a romantic poet was established posthumously, with his literary works being published by his friends Friedrich Schlegel and Ludwig Tieck. These works, including the collection of poems, Hymns to the Night, and his unfinished novels, Heinrich von Ofterdingen, and The Novices at Sais, showcased his profound understanding of the human condition and his ability to weave philosophical and scientific concepts into his writings. Novalis' contributions to early German Romanticism extended beyond his literary prowess. His notebooks, published extensively in the 20th century, revealed the depth of his knowledge in fields such as philosophy and natural science. Novalis sought to integrate his vast array of knowledge with his art, using the fragment as a form of expression. Collaborating with Friedrich Schlegel, he published fragments in Schlegel's journal Athenaeum, allowing him to synthesize poetry, philosophy, and science into a single art form. Novalis' legacy as a polymath and visionary continues to inspire thinkers and artists alike, as his intellectual role in the formation of early German Romanticism remains unparalleled. Novalis, baptized as George Philip Friedrich Freiherr von Hardenberg, came into this world in 1772 at the family estate in the electorate of Saxony. Born in the village of Wiederstedt, which is now known as Arnstein, Novalis hailed from a long line of ancient Lower Saxon nobility. His father, Heinrich Ulrich Erasmus Freiherr von Hardenberg, was an estate owner and salt mine manager, while his mother, Auguste Bernhardine, was Heinrich's second wife. Despite their aristocratic background, the family did not possess great wealth. Growing up, Novalis received a pious upbringing heavily influenced by pietism. His father belonged to the Hernhuter Unity of Brethren, a branch of the Moravian Church, and maintained a strict pietist household. Until the age of nine, Novalis was privately tutored by individuals trained in pietist theology. Following this, he attended a Hernhut school in Nidiatendorf for three years. At the age of twelve, Novalis was entrusted to the care of his uncle, Gottlob Friedrich Wilhelm Freiherr von Hardenberg, who served as the land commander of the Teutonic Order. Novalis spent his time at his uncle's rural estate in Lucklum, where he was exposed to the late Rococo world. Here, he encountered Enlightenment ideas and immersed himself in the contemporary literature of the time, including the works of French encyclopedists, Goethe, Lessing, and Shakespeare. When he turned 17, Novalis enrolled in the Martin Luther Gymnasium in Eilben, near Weissenfels, where his family had relocated in 1785. At the gymnasium, he delved into the study of rhetoric and ancient literature, broadening his intellectual horizons. Novalis, a young and ambitious student, embarked on a journey of legal studies in the late 18th century. His first stop was the University of Jena, where he found himself immersed in the profound teachings of Immanuel Kant and the influential philosophy of Fichte. It was here that Novalis also developed a close bond with the renowned playwright and philosopher, Schiller. During his time in Jena, Novalis's intellectual curiosity led him to attend Schiller's captivating lectures on history. In a twist of fate, Novalis found himself caring for Schiller during a challenging period of the latter's chronic tuberculosis. A testament to their deep connection and mutual respect. In 1791, Novalis took a bold step and shared his poetic talents with the world. His heartfelt poem dedicated to Schiller, titled, Clagen Ein's Junglings, was published in the esteemed magazine Neue Tutsche Merker. However, this act of artistic expression led to his father's decision to withdraw him from Jena, urging him to focus more diligently on his studies. Undeterred, Novalis continued his quest for knowledge alongside his younger brother, Erasmus, at the University of Leipzig. 
It was during this time that he encountered Friedrich Schlegel, a prominent literary critic and the younger brother of August. Friedrich would go on to become one of Novalis's most cherished friends, forming a bond that would last a lifetime. A year later, Novalis embarked on the next chapter of his educational journey, enrolling at the esteemed University of Wittenberg. It was here that he would complete his law degree, further honing his understanding of legal studies and preparing for the challenges that lay ahead. Novalis's unwavering dedication to his studies and his encounters with brilliant minds like Schiller and Schlegel shaped his philosophical outlook and paved the way for his future contributions. As Novalis himself once said, my life will recur in exactly identical fashion. His experiences in Jena, Leipzig, and Wittenberg laid the foundation for his profound insights into philosophy and provided valuable lessons that can guide us in our daily lives. In the small town of Tenstedt, a young philosopher named Novalis found himself captivated by the enchanting Sophie von Kuhn. It was the year 1795, and Novalis was working as an actuary for a district administrator, Colston August Just. Sophie, at just 12 years old, had caught Novalis' attention, and he quickly became infatuated with her. This infatuation seemed to transform his very being, and in secret, two days before Sophie's 13th birthday, they became engaged. However, their engagement faced resistance from Novalis' family due to Sophie's unclear aristocratic background. Despite this, Novalis' brother Erasmus stood by their side, offering his support. It was during this time in Tenstedt that Novalis's intellectual pursuits remained active. He delved into the works of philosophers such as Fichte, the poet Friedrich Holderlin, and others, writing extensive manuscripts that would later shape his own philosophical and literary ideas. Novalis found himself particularly drawn to Fichte's concept of identity and the tension between self and object. However, influenced by his literary commitments, Novalis began to question Fichte's assertion, suggesting that this tension was instead a clash between language and imagination. He took his critique further, proposing that identity is not the separation of subject and object but rather a dynamic process of equal partners in mutual communication. This viewpoint is beautifully summarized in Novalis' own words, Stat Niktich, do. Instead of Nana you. Tragedy struck the young couple when Sophie's health began to decline, her liver tumor believed to be caused by tuberculosis. Sophie underwent surgery without anesthesia in an attempt to save her life, but her health continued to deteriorate. In January 1797, Novalis accepted a job in Weissenfels to secure a stable income for their future marriage. Sophie stayed with her family, and during this time, her health worsened even further. Finally, Novalis' parents relented and agreed to the engagement, but sadly, just two days after Sophie's 15th birthday, she passed away, leaving Novalis devastated. The loss of Sophie, as well as the death of his younger brother shortly after, deeply affected Novalis. These tragic events ignited a more profound commitment to poetic expression. Sophie's death, in particular, became the central inspiration for one of the few works Novalis published during his lifetime, Hymnen and Die Nacht, Hymns to the Night. Through his grief and reflections on identity, Novalis crafted a poetic masterpiece that continues to resonate with readers today, reminding us of the power of love, loss, and the transformative nature of the human spirit. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.